Hi friends, welcome back to Curious Vet. I am Dr. Mohsina. Today we will discuss about a very important condition in canine. So the topic for today's video is canine brachycephalic syndrome. Certain breeds of dogs and cats are prone to difficult obstructive breathing because of the shape of their head, muzzle and throat. The most common dogs affected with this condition are the brachycephalic breeds. And the term brachycephalic means short-headed. And they are the ones which are prone to difficult obstructive breathing. Brachycephalic syndrome is typically a result of our need to breed short little flat-faced dogs this has in turn caused some severe abnormalities which can affect the quality of life of the dog. Dogs with brachycephalic syndrome may have one or more of the following components. So the components which are causing brachycephalic syndrome are divided into two, congenital and acquired. These are the list of the congenital components, elongated soft palate, stenotic nares, and hypoplastic trachea. Now let's see what are the acquired components. They are everted laryngeal saccules, laryngeal edema, laryngeal collapse, redundant or edematous pharyngeal falls. All these are the acquired components. So one or more of these congenital or acquired components are present in the brachycephalic syndrome. This picture represents a typical brachycephalic breed head and throat and this in this uh, diagram you can see the different components like hypoplastic trachea, stenotic nares, elongated and thickened soft palate. Also oversized tongue which displays the soft palate dorsally and obstruct the nasopharynx is also visible here. Then cats can also get elongated soft palate and stenotic nares. Typically the Himalayan and Persian breeds of dog because uh, sorry Persian breeds Persian and Himalayan cats because of their typical anatomy of the head and throat and face they have flat face they have elongated soft palates and stenotic nares now let's see the pathophysiology first let's discuss about the congenital component one is the elongated soft palate usually a normal soft palate extends up to the caudal aspect of the tonsil and the tip of the palate barely touches the epiglottis but when this uh, soft palate is elongated it typically extends into the laryngeal opening blocking the airflow so here you can see the soft palate extending into the larynx blocking the airflow. The other components are stenotic nares, severe na narrowing of the nasal lumen. Here you can see the comparison between a normal nares and the stenotic nares. And hypoplastic trachea causing the narrowing of trachea and especially prevalent in English bulldogs. So these are the congenital components. Now coming to the acquired components as a result of the increased airway resistance. First one is the everted laryngeal saccules. Laryngeal saccule is a mucosal lining of the laryngeal ventricle. This can evert into the lumen of the larynx compounding the problem. Here you can see the everted laryngeal saccule here which in a, evert into the lumen of the larynx and blocking the airflow. So what are the everted saccules? The first picture shows the normal larynx and here you can see the uh, in, uh, at the entrance of the windpipe you can see the saccule usually the laryngeal saccules are uh, in the ventral part and in the second picture in the picture on the right you can see the everted saccule which are blocking the laryngeal lumen. Other, other acquired components are laryngeal edema, laryngeal collapse and redundant or edematous pharyngeal folds, all these obstruct the normal passage of air and lead to breathing difficulties. Now let's see the clinical presentation. 
and the breeds affected. Bulldogs, Boston Terriers, Pug, Pekingese, Boxer, Sharpe, Lassapso. These are the breeds of dogs most commonly affected with the brachycephalic syndrome. Now let's see the clinical signs. The most common signs are exercise intolerance, respiratory distress, gagging and dysphagia, open mouth and loud stertorous breathing, collapse or cyanosis, and sometimes aspiration pneumonia also. And how is this syndrome diagnosed? By physical exam, thoracic radiographs which evaluate hyperplastic trachea, and oral exam under anesthesia which can evaluate the extant elongated soft palate or inverted laryngeal saccules. So the oral exam should be done under anesthesia. Now here comes the x-ray. It is a lateral radiograph of hypoplastic trachea in bulldog. The TD to T1 ratio is 0 0.16. It defines a hypoplastic trachea. Now let's see the treatment. So if the condition is an elongated soft palate, we have to reset resect it to normal size. So here you can see the picture of elongated soft palate blocking the passage. Be very careful as over resection can predispose to aspiration pneumonia and monitor very carefully for excessive postoperative swelling resulting in life threatening airway obstruction. And if the stenotic nair conditions is uh, if the stenotic nares are present we have to do wedge resection of nasal fold. So this is the stenotic nares before and after surgery. This is another picture of uh, stenotic nares pre and post surgery. You can see the difference here. Now if it is due to hypoplastic trachea, there is no effective treatment. As long as you fix the other problems, animal can typically live with a hypoplastic trachea. If you have other underlying diseases such as heart failure, it may become a problem. So there is no effective treatment for hypoplastic trachea, but it, there is treatment for elongated soft palate and stenotic nares, which is a surgical correction. And if it is a laryngeal collapse, make sure this diagnosis is accurate and this is not a laryngeal paralysis but a collapse. Occurs with very advanced brachycephalic syndrome and permanent tracheostomy is probably the best treatment option. So the best treatment option for laryngeal collapse is permanent tracheostomy. And if it is everted laryngeal saccules, can grab the saccule at the base with a long pair of hemostats or Alice tissue forceps and remove the saccule, inverted laryngeal saccule with traction. So here you can see the soft palate resection or staphylectomy. Staphylectomy means soft palate resection performed using a scalpel, scalpel blade scissors or CO2 laser. Any way method can be used. And the palate is stretched and the excess tissue is removed with blade or scissors. Then coming to the aftercare and outcome. Pets must be monitored very closely immediately after surgery. Significant inflammation or bleeding can obstruct the airway making breathing difficult or impossible. 
occasionally a tube must be placed and maintained through an incision in the neck into the trachea called as temporary tracheostomy until the swelling in the throat subsides and pets are usually observed in, in the hospital for at least 24 hours post operative coughing and gagging are common in chronic cases in which the laryngeal cartilages have become inflexible removal of the elongated soft palate and laryngeal saccule may not provide enough relief if the laryngeal cartilages have become inflexible the creation of a new permanent opening into the trachea in the neck area called a permanent tracheostomy may be the only solution in such cases although there are complications associated with this procedure as well The prognosis is good for young animals. They generally will breathe much easier and with significantly reduced respiratory distress. Their activity level can markedly improve after the surgery. Older animals may have a less favorable prognosis. especially if the process of laryngeal collapse has already started if the laryngeal collapse is advanced the prognosis is poor so to remember again these are the important components of the brachycephalic syndrome it consists of congenital and acquired components so the stenotic nares then uh, caudal apparent turbinate tissues protrude into the nasopharynx but it is not an important component then oversized tongue elongated and thick and soft palate hypoplastic larynx and hypoplastic trachea and sometimes there will be laryngeal collapse in advanced cases and such conditions are not cure treatable completely so a permanent tracheostomy is the only option in such conditions so that's all about brachycephalic syndrome if the video is informative you please like it and share it with your friends if you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video see you soon with another video thank you